Hello, uh, my name is Gabriel Vaccario. I am from Philosophy University of Bucharest. In this presentation, I will show that uh, the notion of God cannot have any ontological status that is this. Uh, with my epistemology from what's perspective, uh, I have uh, changed this main framework of human being, uh, according to what, as I call it, the universe or, or the world, which does not exist. And I replace the universe, uh, which does cannot have an ontological status, with epistemologically different worlds. Um, these are what really exist, uh, that is, uh, uh, that have epistemological different ontologies. For instance, I give some examples of micro-epistemological world. It's formed by microparticles, uh, electron, protons, and so on and so forth. The macro-epistemological world formed by planets, by uh, stones, by mountains, by uh, chairs and uh, cars. The wave, uh, electromagnetic waves, ele uh, epistemological world. Uh, the mind is an epistemological world. The brain and the body belongs to the macro epistemological world. My first five books are free at my webpage and many articles and on other different uh, pages. Uh, I indicate here that many people have plagiarized my ideas and you can find a manuscript with this on different sites that I indicated there. We return to this presentation. The main rule of epistemological world is that one epistemological world does not exist for any epistemological world. With my perspective, epistemological worlds, I have solved the greatest problem of cognitive neuroscience, the mind body problem. The mind is an epistemological world, the brain body belongs to the macro. Neuroscience, psychology relationship, emergence, provenience, mental causation, mental representation, level self, and so on and so forth in cognitive neuroscience, cognitive science. I solved in physics the non locality and non speciality entanglement in quantum mechanics, the relation between quantum mechanics, Einstein general theory relativity. Uh, for the first time in the history, I furnished the ontology of special and general theory of relativity. I furnished the ontology of cognitive neuroscience and the new alternative to dark matter, dark energy, and so on and so forth. In philosophy, I came with a new definition for antecedent levels, uh, Big Bang, the, the beginning. The space time cannot have on any ontology status because of the epistemology from worlds. Uh, I indicated the origin of epistemology from worlds in our book. I published, uh, I am publishing a book now in this year at the Greuter uh, with my brother. Uh, in the field. Uh, uh, there, there are, in that book, you can find the main principles, the table of categories, and the last chapters are against infinity, nothing, and God. All these three notions are empty words that cannot have any ontological status within the unicorn world. So, with the epistemic fund, I have changed the oldest framework of thinking, the universe, the world, with a new framework of thinking, epistemic fund worlds. We return to the main topic of this uh, presentation, God. Uh, God cannot exist. The existence of God was uh, imposed to human beings by fear of death. Uh, we have uh, uh, five ways, for instance, Thomas Aguino came in five ways. That, uh, Thing is in motion, something God produces these motions. God in, uh, Aristotle introduces God, the first mover into the equation. Kant explored the conditional possibility for the existence of any object, but for the existence of God, he indicated that God can, uh, the existence of God can be only postulated but not proved. We have to recall that Kant was working within the unicorn world, the unicorn world being the universe, the world, the wrong framework. Nietzsche said God is dead, so we have to replace God with Superman, but he was influenced by Dostoevsky, crime and punishment. Uh, in uh, this presentation, I indicated that God cannot even exist. The main argument against the existence of God, God, and it doesn't matter which religion, in which religion we are talking about, uh, God cannot exist in all epistemological worlds, since one epistemological world does not exist for all epistemological different worlds. So, God cannot be present in all epistemological different worlds. If God were present in all epistemological different worlds, there would be a strong ontological contradiction. So, God cannot be present in all epistemological different worlds. Therefore, the notion of God has been a wrong notion within the unicorn world, universe, until the appearance of the discovery of epistemological different worlds. I discovered epistemological different worlds, working on the mind-body problem. If someone considers that God is just an empty an, uh, epistemological world, the first one, then this kind of God would not be the real God, a new God, but it would be only an epistemological world. This epistemological world, the first one, 
cannot have any feature attributed to God. So it is not a new God. It's just a naturalization of God that is uh, an epistemological world, a natural epistemological world, and nothing else. It would be quite absurd to consider the hypermatic as being God. With epistemological worlds, we can make an analogy between the existence of God and the mind-body problem. The mind-body problem could not be solved because, for instance, Descartes, uh, 305 years ago, 50 years ago, he considered that uh, the union between mind and body is reality, reality which escapes philosophical discourse because the mind and brain, uh, for him, have the different ontological uh, status. And uh, having this ontological, different ontological status, how can uh, uh, we can discover the union between mind and brain? It is not possible. We, I made uh, an analogy between my body problem and uh, that world. Uh, I made an analogy. Uh, it is the same problem. Uh, if God has a, a, a different ontological status than all that is in this world, how then God interact with us? How then uh, communicate with us and so on. Uh, so uh, we reach uh, with the existence of God in this world universe. We reach a strong ontological tradition. It's exactly similar to the my body problem. With the divine ontological status, God cannot produce, exist, in communicate, interact with something in the universe. So the notion of God is meaningless. The God who uh, observes us and uh, will be punished uh, after that. Uh, and we uh, will be sent in uh, paradise or in uh, jail, in uh, uh, heaven, heaven. But uh, it is meaningless to talk about uh, God and the world. There are ontologically different contradictions cannot be uh, accepted. With the absolute different worlds, for the first time, which I show that God cannot have any ontological status, the impossible duality between God and world, constructed within the unicorn world, this duality that has produced a strong ontological contradiction exactly as the duality between wave and particle, mind and brain, micro and macro entities. I solve all this problem with epsilon from walls. In science, the idea of God has been eliminated from scientific discourse. However, nobody has demonstrated so far that God cannot even exist. Whitehead was right. All philosophies have been uh, footnotes of Plato philosophy based on religion's way of thinking of human beings relationship, interaction between self and God, but both elements are wrong because it's within the unicorn world. Uh, I call the universe the world unicorn world. In physics, Krauss since so this nothing, uh, that universe is from nothing. In his book from 2012, we talk about his book in uh, our book of uh, 2016. And he said, uh, Krauss said nothing is unstable, the universe appeared from nothing. But, but this idea within the unicorn world is quite wrong. Uh, if our universe appears from nothing, billions of uh, galaxies appear from nothing, how is it possible from nothing, which has no ontological status, to appear so many galaxies? It is quite, and uh, this is uh, one problem. Another problem is why it didn't happen earlier or later? If there is no impulse from outside, because it was not the impulse from outside, uh, why appeared? Uh, 13.82 billion years ago and not earlier or later, because if it's nothing, there was no impulse. So, in fact, uh, uh, we cannot say that it is from nothing. We cannot say that the universe, the galaxies, appear from uh, because of God. It is from the hyper nothing, as I call the first epistemological world. It's not God, it's just uh, kind of naturalization of God is an epistemological world. The notion of world, infinity, and God created by human mind within the wrong framework, the unicorn world, all these notions have no ontological status. See our next book that will appear at the writer. Thinking in one world, the human being needed in a supreme being, the beginning or starting point, prime engine, as Aristotle or the Big Bang, actual physics of causality. Causality of what? Of the world. The world exists because of the Big Bang because of prime engine, because of God. Uh, within the epistemological world, this causality is quite a wrong notion. Uh, one epistemological world doesn't appear from, an, uh, is not caused 
causality, uh, the relationship between two epsilon zero is not a causality because one doesn't exist for the other. So we cannot insert causality between two epsilon different worlds. Uh, in the common framework of thinking, without the existence of a supreme being in one world, many fundamental human ideas simply loses their ground. The Big Bang replaces God as the first moment of the actual world. In our book, uh, The Greater, for the first time in the history of thinking, we show that there are uh, no conditional possibility for any kind of supreme being. So, if a supreme being exists, what are the conditions of its existence? What is the nature? of a supreme being or the, what is the ontological status of a supreme being in relation to all the other entities? It has to have a, an ontological different status. If it has an ontological different status, then how uh, that supreme being interact with the world? Cannot interact because there are, uh, there are uh, different ontologies. It is exactly the situation in which uh, Descartes was uh, placed uh, 350 years ago, uh, mind and brain uh, having uh, ontologically different substance, how they interact. The union between mind and brain was like the greatest problem for uh, Descartes. So, supreme being in reality, if a supreme being is a, an epistemological world, the first one, then the supreme being cannot exist for all epistemological worlds that belong to epistemological uh, that belong to epistemological worlds. If God is an epistemological world, then such God would not exist for any epistemological world. So it is not God, because you cannot say an epistemological world to be God, since that epistemological world doesn't exist for any other epistemological worlds. So we cannot replace God with uh, the hypernatum. It would be meaningless. Uh, the problem is that in order to avoid uh, the regress ad infinitum, the hypernatic has not a, an ontology, but has an hyperontology, but doesn't mean that it's a kind of uh, God, uh, since uh, the hypernatic does exist for any epistemological worlds. So it is not a God. It's just the first epistemological world. A supreme being present everywhere, uh, would interact with everything, uh, it will know everything. So this is important. Hyperwriting EW0 corresponds to all epistemological worlds, but this condition does not indicate that hyperwriting is a new kind. Hyperantic does not exist for all entities that belong to epistemological worlds and does not exist for any mind epistemological world because this mind is an epistemological world, then the hyperantic cannot be God. Uh, before uh, the discovery of ep uh, the epistemological worlds, everybody considered that God has to have a different ontological status than the human body, human minds, microparticles, wave. Uh, uh, any kind of entity that belongs to, uh, to the world. My question is, how God would interact with something, anything from the world, if there are epsom, uh, different ontologies here? It is exactly reflected. It is mirrored exactly uh, the mind-body problem in uh, Descartes, uh, uh, in the period of Descartes. He could not solve the union between mind and brain because of their ontological, different ontological status. Conclusion is that we can say that the above argument is a kind of naturalization of God. The only possible case for God is that God is not God, but hypernatic, A-E-W-0. But God is just simply the epistemological E-W-0. It's not a super, super being with superpowers. No, it's just an epistemological world. Human being invented uh, God to avoid uh, the ontological loneliness of the self, uh, they invented God. Uh, in fact, uh, as I showed, the, the mind, uh, self or soul is an epistemic world, does not exist for any epistemic world. So the self does exist even for the body, the mind does exist even for the brain. So uh, we cannot insert now in this framework uh, God. If, even if my body does exist for my mind, my mind does exist for my brain. So, where to insert God? Because the world doesn't exist, the universe doesn't exist, there are epistemological worlds which one doesn't exist for the other. So, it is meaningless to insert God into, into these equations. I can use a kind of Spinoza uh, panties, uh, but he considered this within the unicorn world. However, the hyper is not even any kind of panties since EW0 does not exist for any epistemological world. Uh, 
the hypernatum just correspond to all epsilon neutron ones. Hypernatum cannot be equal with any kind of So any kind of pantheism is totally rejected. We can say that God is not naturalized into the epsilon world, but translated within uh, my perspective, EW, uh, EDWS, uh, we claim that God cannot even exist. Even each of us correspond to the hypernatum. With this uh, new perspective, epistemic from world framework, I have solved all the uh, major scientific problems in physical neuroscience and uh, philosophical problems. Uh, I showed that God cannot exist, uh, and I indicated that many uh, uh, sentences uh, uh, from uh, sciences and philosophy are quite wrong, constructed in the unicorn world. This framework I can see so clear as does not exist, God cannot exist. And I, I end this presentation with Nikola, Te I translate Nikola Tesla words, what one man calls God, another calls the laws of physics. I translate in, in my words what one man, man calls God, we, I call the hypermatic EW0, an epistemological world, no more or less. And this is the end of. Uh, presentation. God cannot even exist. Thank you.